So I want to tell you a story about Ruth Bader Ginsburg's visit to Alaska in 2008 when she came to speak at the Alaska Bar Association Convention. I first met Justice Ginsburg when she was actually Judge Ginsburg and she was a judge on the District of Columbia Court of Appeals and she was performing the wedding ceremony for two of our friends. So we traveled to Washington and there was this very small woman conducting the wedding ceremony and somebody said, oh, that's Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She's actually a potential nominee to the Supreme Court depending on who's, who's the president. And so at that wedding we, we got to meet Judge Ginsburg and then a few years later she was appointed to the Supreme Court. In 2007 I was president of the Bar Association and so part of my job is to pick a keynote speaker. So I wrote a letter to now Justice Ginsburg and uh, talked about how much I enjoyed meeting her at the wedding several years before and wanting to know whether she would be willing to come and speak at the Alaska Bar Association Convention. And a few weeks later, we got a letter back accepting the invitation. So they came to Anchorage in May of 2008, and she was the keynote speaker. And for example, where Justice Roberts, or Chief Justice Roberts, where Chief Justice Roberts talked about how it was a common endeavor that the justices were engaged in, Justice Ginsburg talk, or Justice Ginsburg's talk was about the role of dissent and how oftentimes a dissenting decision will later become the majority opinion several years later as the thinking among the court members evolves. As part of my role as president of the bar, I was, I was kind of given the role of chief entertainer and so that meant the Ginsburgs during their weekend in, in Alaska, we would tour with them. I, I had the privilege with my wife Lisa, we took Marty and Justice Ginsburg on, on a tour down Turnigan Arm. And there are three things about that trip down Turnigan Arm that really stand out. One, we stopped at McHugh Creek, and, and for those of you who know McHugh Creek, it can be incredibly windy and blustery, and when the winds are blowing and the rains are coming down, it's, it's not a particular, particularly warm place to be. And on this May day, it was actually blowing really hard, and what was really noteworthy was that Justice Ginsburg insisted not, not only getting out of the car, but walking around and exploring things. After we left McHugh Creek, we went down to Portage and, and met with Alaska Justice Morgan Christen for lunch and had a really enjoyable time there. And then on the way back to Anchorage, stopped in Girdwood at the hotel. And a, another sign of how much Justice Ginsburg really cares for all the people that she works with, she went into the hotel and found the gift shop and came out of the gift shop with several gifts, primarily for the law clerks and her staff that work with her because what she likes to do when she would travel is bring, get, bring back gifts for the people that work with her. And it was just another sign of how in touch she was with, with people and the things that mattered for people. Justice Ginsburg, for those that have heard her speak, is, is very slow and paced in her approach. And you learned when you were having discussions with her that she would pause to collect her thoughts and, and everyone would learn to wait while she paused and learn to wait until she finished what was on her mind. And then the last time that we saw Justice Ginsburg was in 2017 when, when both Lisa and I were in Washington. She was in Washington for her work and I was in Washington connection, in connection with legislative activities. So we wrote her and she invited us to come by her chambers. And so Lisa and I went by her chambers in November of 2017 and, and got, a, got a tour of the chambers. One of the features that those have seen the movies about her that she has this whole collection of the necklaces that she would wear on her robes and so she showed, showed us this closet of all these different necklaces that people had sent to her and there must have been 15 or 20 different necklaces that were in the closet and she showed us those and she had had pictures of Marty and we talked for a while about cases before the court coming up in the months ahead as well as talked about family and it was very similar, just a friendly, engaging discussion and conversation. And it, it was a reminder that for me, Justice Ginsburg will always be somebody that was a just an incredibly dedicated advocate for her clients when she was a litigator, and that she was an incredibly passionate justice while she was on the Supreme Court, and that she cared deeply about the issues that were before the court. She cared deeply about 
careful analysis and meaningful relationships with all the members of the Supreme Court, but she also cared deeply about people. She understood that people are precious and that each of us have our own individual lives that are unique and special and that part of what I think brought her value in terms of her work was, was learning about the people that she came to know throughout her career, learn what they brought to the community and, and the concerns that they had and how she could know about those folks and show her care for those folks in the decisions that she made. So I, for one, will not only miss her role and the work she's done for, for equal justice and for women's rights and countless issues, but also miss the friendship that, that my family had with Justice Ginsburg over the last several years.